Good evening everybody and welcome to this stream this evening. <laughs> yeah then. On the stream tonight. I'm going, I've, I've now had this a little while. So, um, it's a 3D pen. So I'm going to open said 3D pen called a Korea Pop. So let's just don't have this a lot of space here in the studio, so I'll sort of open it as best as I can. So let's get this box open. See what's inside. I don't know. Well, I do know, sort of. I know there's a 3D pen, and that's about all that I know. Uh, and that's potentially wishful thinking as well because they could have sent a brick I suppose. Let's have a look at what we've got. Uh, thought for a minute then we're going to have bags of air but uh, nope so we have a pen. A 3D pen and the camera's backwards but never mind. And I have ink, lots of ink, regular ink, lots of, lots and lots of regular ink. How many of this regular ink have I got? One, two, three, four, four at least five. Probably the chosen the size of this box just right. <laughs> and what else do we have? We've got some aroma ink, so ink that smells. Some temperature colour changing ink, so as it gets warmer it changes colour. Interesting. And yeah, that's more temperature ink. How much? Yeah. I knew I was getting that much temperature ink. Regular ink is actually different colours. And I know they sent some extra because of the delays. So it kind of looks like that maybe what they've done is sent some brown. <laughs> right, quite wide brown, I don't know. So we've got black, blue, and green, I'm guessing. Brown. Cyan, yellow and red. White's all in plastic bags, I'm not sure. Black, blue, green. Black, blue, green. That's temperature coloured ink. That's the smelly ink, the aroma ink, in red, orange and green, oh, watermelon. What? Oh, I see. Uh, I've got I've got some aroma ink which smells either watermelon, orange or pine. Brown. And I 
handful of handful of plastic bags and some more brown. Okay. So let's just put some of this away. Clear the desk a little bit. So we can actually open the box. Nakamui, good evening and Merry Christmas to you as well. And that camera is not in focus, is it? Let's zoom the camera out. And attempt to focus. There we go. So Creo Pop is the 3D pen. What this is, is this is cold ink. So a lot of 3D pens are what they call fusion deposition or few what they, they basically melt plastic and then extrude that plastic and it'll bond to itself whilst it's it's cooling down while it's still sort of semi-liquid this pen um, is uses UV cured liquid and so uh, it's cold basically so the packaging isn't too bad it's quite a Quite a nice packaging, I guess. Feels quite weighty. Kind of looks like I ought to be able to press it out, but it doesn't press. And I've got a tab here to open. Uh, so nice black on black lettering. And I know the camera's reversed. Let me reverse the camera. And that's on. There's the camera on here, that's the camera there. Make it so you can read, read the thing. Queer Pop. Which is the name of the pen. Frequently asked questions. I think I'd be able to read that if I actually change glasses. Let's have a look at what it says and then we'll get to actually opening the thing uh, god blimey see what they've, they've done I think just you can just about see it's purple dark purple on black and it's not the easiest of things to read really poor contrast how is Creopop different from other 3D pens? Okay, Creopop is unlike hot thermoplastic 3D pens. Our innovative inks harden using Creopop's built-in LED lights. Meaning no hot parts, no melting plastics or unpleasant odours. Hmm. And our rechargeable battery lets you draw cord free without any cable getting in the way. I hope that doesn't mean I have to charge it before I can use it. Is it safe to use? Hmm. That seems like a silly question for... Well, I don't know. I mean, these days you can't sell anything that's not safe, really. Yes, Creopop is safe for home use. Uh, our innovative links, inks have been extensively lab tested. Hmm. That sounds like one of those words that means nothing but sounds good extensively. I suppose it depends on whose who's definition of extensive. but uh, And meet applicable safety standards in the European States and the European Union. That's United States and the European Union. I don't tell you what the safety standards are, at least not on the box. It does indeed, uh, Nachmui. So what's the last question? No, there's another two questions. Can Creopop be used anywhere in the world? Yes, the Creopop pen is battery operated and charged using a standard mini USB charging cable. As long as you have access to a computer or wall outlet USB, your Creopop will charge. That's not what... 
I get really sensitive to questions. You know, it says, can you use it anywhere around the world? And they, they, they actually say, yes, you can charge it anywhere. Which is not quite the same thing. Like, can I use this 60 feet underwater? Can I use this in the Antarctic? Hmm. They didn't actually answer the question. Make it look like they've answered the question. It's, I'm, I'm just, I get really, um, pedantic's the word, I guess, when they do that. They, um, they don't want to answer the question truthfully, so they answer a slightly different question. How long does an ink cartridge last? Uh, so each ink cartridge can print a 14 meter long line. That's 46 feet. That sounds quite a lot, but I bet you it doesn't actually last that long. So I'm guessing to open it, we get hold of this and somehow pull. Nope. Maybe we get hold of that and ah, pulls the other way. Okay. So there we go. So what do we have here? Um, we've got somebody building something. Somebody making a flower. We've got various um, things that they've made using Creopop and the pen itself with an ink cartridge. And this is sealed. Okay, well that's like the uh, do not uh, do not break seals that you get with um, on the back of equipment and things I guess I could if I really want it to prise it off really really gently um, and uh, and therefore not break you know, apparently not break the seal but you know what <laughs> I'm gonna be bothered so we're going to do a straight I was about to say a straight cut with a scalpel but it don't want to cut. So this is obviously something different. <laughs> Void, it says. I'm not sure you can see that. Yeah, it says void, and now it's left um, on the side of the box. You can see all the metal bits there, but effectively it just says void all over it. <laughs> One of those security stickers. Which actually mean nothing at all in the European Union anyway. Uh, because you have to be able... I mean... Hmm, odd one, but if you bought this... Uh, distance selling you have to be allowed to reasonably access it to take a look and see whether it meets your requirements so stickers like void on this side there have absolutely no meaning whatsoever so another box of pens uh, ink and the pen itself which reminds me of something like something out of Star, Star Wars, a bit like a speeder or something out of Star Wars. Just that there's a ship in, in some um, on, on some uh, program or something that's got that sort of slightly bent shape. I don't know what it is. I can't remember. Um, well, it's got some power in it anyway. It lit up. Uh, I'm sure there should be some instructions somewhere in here. Let's see if we can... Uh, there's a little note here that says accessories. Well, so far it's been quite interesting opening. Alright, go on the floor. We've got an instructional an instruction manual and a quick start guide, which I can't actually get at. I love it when you get instruction books and it, it, in, an instruction book which gives you a parts list and the first thing on the parts list is the instruction book. What I want to know is if you don't have it, how do you know it's missing? Ah, they give you a drawing map in which you can not mess up your desk. <laughs> in all the videos that, you've, that I've seen of this 
people do it on bits of paper, but they actually supply a little plastic drawing mat, which is quite cool. And that's not a pun on Cool Ink, but it's it's nice that they've uh, supplied that. I know I've paid for it, but you know. And we have a 3D mini USB. Mini USB um, lead for charging, I guess. And I can't really see anything else in there. So I think that's it. Um, it's quite a nice box, is that? It's, uh, it would work quite well for storing, storing the pen in, I guess. So we'll put that back in there for the moment. And put that to... Something's magnetic. Ah! That's how they held... It's a magnetic side. Hold it closed. So once you get one of these, you get two free magnets as well. <laughs> right. So quick start guide says, what does it say? Safety instructions, of course. Uh, Looks like a funny translation. Before using your Creo Pop pen in a mode. Okay. What happens if I use it in a room? And I'm being silly again, but in a mode. Yeah. Well, they weren't. Um, they weren't English, so that's probably uh, uh, allowable. But uh, some really weird um, language sometimes. Be sure to read and understand the important safety and handling information. Okay. Why give me a quick start guide that tells me to read the full instruction manual, basically? It's a little bit... Hmm. Okay, so it tells me about opening the cartridges, about putting nozzles on. So it's a cartridge, uh, right, okay. It says it, it says you know charge the pen for two hours before first use. Alternatively, charge it for at least ten minutes before using it with the cable attached. Hmm. And they expect you to plug that into a computer or a wall outlet and that into the pen and use it plugged in you know, otherwise you, you know once it's charged you can use it without but and they give you a two foot cable <laughs> I don't know well how, how close they think people's computers are but actually I'm a bit lucky as I have a USB hub a powered USB hub just over there so I'm gonna plug that in so it means I can just about Excuse me, reaching across the camera, but there we go. I can just about um, do that. Now there's two things in the back, two holes in the back, and I don't know why. Well, I do actually. Um, one of them will be their programming and test uh, hole, but. It leaves you wondering why, what, what it's there for. So plug that in. Plug that in. Yeah. I 
I'm plugging that in the right way. I'm trying to plug that in the right way. Oh, that's stiff. Not only is it that, it's at a funny angle. I don't know if you can see that like that. Funny angle. I was expecting it to go straight in, not at an angle, which it makes sense in that it's at right angles to the um, to the end. But I was kind of expecting it to be at right angles to the pen. So we've got a red charge light on. So we'll leave that on there like that just for the moment whilst I just read the... Uh, take a quick look at the rest of the instructions, which basically the quick start tell me how to load a, a pen cartridge. Then it turn, tells me how to turn it on. <laughs> turn on the pen by pressing the power button. Hmm. Okay, turns itself off apparently if you don't use it, which is good. Okay, so it can be used in three modes, or three different ways of using the pen apparently. You can use it with without the curing light on so you can do a like fill in a whole area and I guess smooth out the ink or basically do what you want with it and um, in order to uh, just fill in a shape um, yeah so basically you can use put it in molds and things like that you can use it with just the light on so you can cure something you've already um, extruded and you can use it in just drawing mode which has both does extrudes the ink and cures it at the same time Okay. So what we have on here apparently is we've got a power button at the back, we've got a speed button and then we've got an operation button that um, actually sets the thing going and stops it going. Okay, and then that's about it. Okay, sounds actually fairly uh, fairly simple to use. So let's just see if the instruction manual's got anything in it. That's um, it's going to tell me to do what it, the other one's just done. Okay, yeah, it's got a what's in the box. <laughs> You'd had to have one. Let's. I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see now. Does it have in the what's in the box? Um, uh, okay. <laughs> well, at least that didn't. Okay. What I was expecting when it said uh, what's in the box was literally, yeah. There's a pen, there's a charging cable, but no, actually, it's it's a, actually is intelligent. There was 
two or three well sort of four different packages you could get with this um, a pen what they called a starter kit which was a pen with just three uh, one box of cartridges i.e. what came with the pen itself there was another one which is called an explorer which gave 15 cartridges so five ink boxes and then there's an ultimate which has 27 ink cartridges in it um, of all various uh, types and uh, this was um, like a Kickstarter, well it was Indiegogo thing um, so you know, slightly different instructions to what we actually got as, uh, as backers Cleaning and maintenance, okay that's, that sounds like a good one to know as does some of these other things okay uh, Creopops light sensitive inks contain photopolymers well yes good that may react with some materials and surface coatings like laptop covers smartphone covers computer mice Lego and the stuff that comes out of 3D printers kind of all the sorts of things that you might actually want to do something on hmm so in other words all the things that you thought you'd be able to do like make a nice case for your for your phone for example or um you know draw something on the back of a laptop or you know add something to a 3d printer uh print printed output down is basically what it's saying So only standalone models. Um, They do not throw your Creopop pen. It may cause the pen to malfunction. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh. Do not stare directly into the diodes, the LED diodes. Yeah, well, given that they're ultraviolet, that's probably a good idea. Um. Yeah. So to get really technical, the wavelength of the LED is 405 nanometers, which means it's more high energy than UV, but not harmful apparently. Do not eat the ink. Right, that does make sense, I guess. Do not rub the ink into your eyes. Now, why would you want to do that? But never mind. Okay. Apparently, you can draw directly onto your skin. Um, but you should do what the colour patch test first. You basically put some on, wait 30 minutes and see what happens. Um, if nothing happens, you're okay. If something has happened, then don't do it. But that's kind of a standard allergy, allergy sort of test. And they are actually, um, they were intending to make some ink specifically for sort of like temporary tattoo type uh, things, um, which is supposed to be obviously less, um, less prone to allergies. So basically we put an ink cartridge in and we see how it goes. Right. So, I am go since I've since I've got three brown and some coloured. Th this is coloured ink. Oh, no, I'm not going to use a colour. That came with the pen. Um, this came also in the box. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to use the uh, the coloured ones um, since I've got six brown cartridges. As apparently, um, I'm going to. Uh, 
Oh, this one does pull out. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use those first. All right. It pulls out that far. Clever. Now, how do I... There we go. And this is, this is how the ink comes in, well I guess basically the shringes, well effectively, that's what it looks like to me, um, powered shringes. So we will open this, it says don't use a knife, and there's little tear slots there, and the vacuum sealed, so once you let air in it uh, opens up fairly easily. See if I can pull one of these things out. This side up. I'm assuming that means they only go into the pen one way. And what I'm guessing is it works, the pen works by sort of t twisting that, uh, which then screws in like a plunger, which makes the stuff come out the end. They give you another, uh, what looks like another sort of a quick uh, quick start about the ink. How to put it into your pen, yep. Which is good, at least you don't get a chance to, uh, to lose them. And what we have here in the top are the nozzles. Do I need to get a nozzle out? Yeah. Now I was thinking I'm going to have to um, use a knife or something on that, but it looks like they've used a ziplock top, which is, seems quite sensible. Yep, they have. So I shall get a nozzle out and then zip that up so I don't lose the others. I'm guessing that um, you can maybe only use it on one. Once you've used it on a on a on a cartridge, you don't use it use um, use it again. So apparently, you pull the nozzle off, the this cover off, and then we put the uh, the nozzle on. Just pushes on, and then we open up this pen by. It actually, it's got marks on it, which is quite good. You mm, probably can't see them. There you go. It's kind of twisting opposite directions uh, marks to uh, to split the uh, the pen apart. Okay. Looks like the drive motor's in the top. We've got four connections there. Probably for the button and for there'll be some LEDs on the front if we take the cover off. Yeah, three LEDs. And so we insert this in that way. Now it, it actually will look, it will, it won't really go in. Um, it, it's, it's got a flat on the top and the bottom. So it looks like it only goes in one way because if you try and put it in, it's side, you know, the wrong way, it sort of jams. So I won't force it. In fact, he does say that, don't force it. Um, if you do use the pliers or something to to get it out. So we just put that in there like that and then it come pops out the bottom and then we put the, the, this back together I guess by just twisting like that. Right shall we try it? Let's create a bit of space. <laughs> and already the ink is oozing out the bottom. I hope that stops. So apparently we turn it on and then we draw something. Quite what I'm going to draw I have no idea. There's a speed indicator on the top here. We're apparently on speed 2. 
Uh, what do we draw? I have no idea. It's like it's like one of those things when somebody says, "Think of something," and you, your mind goes blank. That's what's happening here. Hmm. Apparently, I have to draw a cat, but I'm not sure I know how to draw a cat. <laughs> Let Let's try something totally totally silly first. Let's try a pyramid, a triangular pyramid. So all I apparently do is push this button here at the front. And I start using some of my 14 meters of... Uh, ink. Now this is, this is going slow. So in theory it should cure quite quickly. Alright. Um, you don't have to hold the end the, the hold the um, the button down. It's one of these that you click it to start and click it to stop. So I've got a triangle there, which I know has already broken away from the mat um, and is not joined up. So I've got. I thought I thought that would have um, joined to the already existing uh, piece, but we'll see whether we can join it. So little tiny bit of plastic. So let's. See if I can first of all make that stick and then let's try and come up from here. Come on. Yeah, that's not very good. I wanted it to to sort of cure, so I should apparently be able to just double click. I'm supposed to be able to double click that to turn on just the light. Okay, what did I do wrong? How do I turn on just the light? I'm sure it said light only mode. Turn on the pen. Double click the button at the front. That's what I was doing. Oh, there we go. You got to be faster. So what I should be able to do is just hold that like that. Uh, interestingly, that this shows up as a white light on the camera. That'll be the um, the fact that the camera is really and then wants to turn it off. The camera is really sensitive to blue light. And this being. Hmm, that's some ink had oozed out of the pen, and it's kind of like um, just sort of a slightly thick paste. So I guess in a few minutes we'll find out if I'm allergic to the stuff. Hmm. I can already tell this. Well. Uh, Kind of obvious, I guess. There's, it's not going to be a precision art form, isn't this? Okay. Well, that was supposed to. That was supposed to be bent over like that to create like a pyramid. Okay. So I'm obviously not going to get a pyramid out of this.
and cure the uh, cure that bit of ink. And uh, see if I can join this up. This button at the front isn't really um, It's sort of not very reactive. Keep, I keep clicking it and nothing happens and then... Uh, like I'm clicking it twice like it's supposed to do to turn the light on and it just doesn't react too well to it. So I'm supposed to be able to cure the ink just by putting the light on there. Well, it looks like it's glowing red, yeah. All I see is a slight purple glow. Um, but the camera's picking it up. It's almost like a laser, isn't it? That's uh, in, in the nozzle there. It might be my imagination, but the light sort of feels warm. It probably is my imagination. So let's see if I can join these two pieces to that piece and then fix the fact that I've just broken it. You kind of, I'm trying to work out, it doesn't really want to, and I do the double click, which is supposed to turn just the light on without extruding any of the ink. It really doesn't want to uh, turn on. I don't know if you can hear me or even see them. Trying to get this to turn on and it doesn't want to okay maybe it's a you maybe I have to do a really quick double click and a really slow single click so my first ever <laughs> 3d printed object Which actually feels quite rigid. I'm, uh, I'm sort of, you know, it's a thin strip of sort of plastic, I guess, but um, well, polymer apparently. Um, but it sort of feels solid, shall we say? There's a bit of give in it, obviously, because it's it's a thin piece. But it actually feels quite solid. It's not, you know, it's not like it would be um, spongy or, or, you know, like the paste that's actually uh, extruded out of the pen. So. It's interesting. Now it becomes a case of what inspiration. <laughs> what sort of inspiration is there for doing something? Pussy cat. Can I do something that looks like a pussy cat? I have no idea. What does a pussy cat look like? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Here, let's find out. I'm sort of squashing this down a little bit into the uh, onto the board. I want you to stick to start with at least. So 
So that's sort of intended to be a little bit of a base of a body. You can't really see that very well, can you? And that's another pussycat knocking things over. First of all, can I focus on the pen, it's pen tip? Yeah, just about. And let's zoom in on there. And I'll move the camera a little bit over. So I'm sort of drawing on that there. So let's do another layer on top of there. I'm doing this on a really slow extrusion rate because I don't want it to uh, get away from me, so to speak. And already it's actually not stuck down, which is... Uh, I thought I'd managed to stick it to this. I guess the idea is it doesn't really stick to the... Uh, to the purple mat, but it would be a lot easier if it did. I'm just doing is going round and round building up layers here. Now you can speed up the extrusion rate apparently, but I am uh, going to keep it at this speed just because I'm not that good at it.
Hmm. Let's just uh, uh, cure that a little bit. <laughs> The light actually surprisingly bright when you uh, you're looking at it like that. I mean, you, you can you can see on the camera just how bright it looks. Now it doesn't actually look that bright to me because it's, but it's it actually is. Um, I found as soon as I turned it off, it was kind of like uh, you know, who turned out the lights. Okay, so. I was kind of intending to sort of come up and try and do the back and then do some some sort of head on it. Let's see if I can let's see if I can give it a tail. Um. Okay, well, we've got the tail on it, and I've got some gaps in here, so let's, uh, I'm just doing the body, so let me fill in some of these gaps a little bit. Okay, And when you turn it off, you can hear the motor wind back. So obviously, what it's doing, it's winding the plunger back a little bit so that it doesn't continue to ooze out of the end. Um, I'm just trying to put some sort of head on on this. It is obviously completely out of scale, at the wrong scale altogether.
<laughs> well, I don't, it sort of vaguely resembles a cat. <laughs> Uh, the neck's a bit long and the head's a bit small, but um, that's the very first attempt at using uh, at using the paint. So uh, not necessarily up to the up to the standard of uh, carvings or anything else, but um, uh, well, it was an attempt. It was an attempt. But um, I think <laughs> I think that that will be it for tonight's attempt. To be honest, I'm gonna let the pen um, I'm gonna let the pen charge. So we'll put the uh, put the cap on the pen. It just seems to sit over the end. I don't know if do you cap the end in any way. Um, Let's just see how if there's any instructions about putting it away. Oh, apparently there's an ac the the other hole in the top is an accessory connector. So quite what accessories is going to be, I don't know. Um, now let's have a quick look in the instruction manuals. Just see if there's anything about how to. Uh, whether you just put the uh, the cap over the end. Protective pen cap, using it, charging it, installing the cartridge. The thing about the um, the cartridge thing is, it basically means you can change colour as well, just by you know because the the ink never comes out of the cartridge except at the end of it. Basically, um, you're able to uh, to to replace it, to pull it out, and just put another one in its place. So you can change colour just fairly quickly, I guess. Um, they're going to have, there's regular inks in different colours, temperature sensitive ink which I've got some of. So that's the sort of thing where you can paint on like a cup, uh, or, you know, do something on a cup and then as you put hot water in or maybe cold water, it changes colour. Could be quite cool, <laughs> quite hot <laughs> to do. Um, glow in the dark inks, magnetic inks so that you can make like uh, fridge magnets and things like that. Uh, glittering inks apparently that glitter uh, and yes aromatic inks so you can have you can I don't know, uh, do a um, do a picture of an orange with orange smelling ink I suppose if you did like orange smelling ink and then did magnetic ink on the back you could stick it to your fridge um, No, apparently you don't need to do anything once. Yep, yeah, no, you just. Uh, I suppose you can technically pull the pull the nozzle off and, and recap it. It doesn't say anything about doing that though, so I won't. I'm going to leave turn this off. And we'll let it charge. Leave it to charge, and we'll have a play with it again tomorrow. Um, once it's had chance to have a full charge, so I'm not using it with the cord on the end of it which is a little bit awkward but we'll have a play with it uh, tomorrow evening so first two objects sort of a triangular sort of pyramid sort of kind of it's got four sides on the triangular sides so it's a triangular pyramid of some kind um, I guess you could also call it an airframe and we've got something that sort of sort of resembles a cat maybe it's an alien cat <laughs> with a long neck i don't know but it's got a tail it's got its front legs and paws it's got it's got two ears and a nose 
So we'll have a we'll have another play with this tomorrow. We've reached the end of the stream, a short one tonight, I'm afraid. So we've been out all day today and got back in quite late. So I am going to do the usual two or three adverts. There's I've reversed the camera, haven't I? There's the shop, which I am pointing at there. Recommend you check it out. It's got lots of lovely um, chainmail jewellery in it at the moment. I'm not sure we'll ever get good enough to put 3D printed objects like this in it, um, but maybe some of the pyrography and other things, and sort of some of the nice 3D uh, 3D um, chainmail jewellery like this one that we did on stream the other night. Um, I'm also going to say if you're not following me on Twitch. I recommend you do so. That way you will get notified and you'll be able to see in your favourites when I'm live. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter. It's at Zaragonart. That way you'll get a tweet as well when it goes live. And you'll be able to come back tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. And see the 3D pen in action again. We'll have another play with it and then do something else. Uh, otherwise, if you just want to try and catch me on my next stream... Next one is expected to be tomorrow night, around eight, about yeah, eight o'clock UK time, twenty hundred hours GMT. Uh, it was about two and a quarter hours ago. Um, apart from that, I will wish everybody happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy um, whatever you uh, choose to celebrate at this time of the year. Hope I'll see you in the studio again tomorrow night. Thanks for watching, everybody. And have a good night from the UK. Bye for now.